guys, Mel here. Today I'm sharing how I sew elastic thread into the neckline or collar of my knits. I'll be demonstrating uh, my method with uh, this sweater, which is the Haley Ganser. Uh, there's no elastic right now. I've only worn it for a day. Um, but as you can see, we look uh, at the back of the neck. There is a gap there, some extra space. And with elastic, I'm hoping to minimize that. And also over time, just prevent excess stretching in that area. I'll be using some transparent knitting elastic thread, but stick around to the end and I'll share an alternative and other ways that you can add elastic to your knits. All right guys, time to do some sewing. I have already threaded my elastic thread onto my needle and I've pulled out about 50 centimeters or 20 inches worth of elastic and it's still connected to the spool. I'll trim that at the end. And I'll be sewing just a single strand into the neckline. So I like to start at the back. And I don't like going into the very top. So for this one, this is a one by one twisted rib collar finished with Italian bind off. So I don't usually prefer to go in the very top. And I like to go one row down from my Italian bind off. And I'll be inserting my needle under both legs of this twisted knit stitch. Some people like to sew just into a single leg of the stitch. I prefer both. Um, and then I will skip the purl stitch and insert into both legs of the next knit stitch. And keep repeating that all the way around. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm gonna go through and finish up sewing into these knit stitches and I'll show you guys how I secure the ends. When you're going around, try not to worry about whether you have the right tension or not. That is something that can be adjusted after going all the way around. So I've made it back around. I've got my last column to go through here. You can see where I started is there. Pull this through. I like to keep the tails pretty long and so what I'll do it's I'll snip the end now from the spool leaving lots well maybe about four inches or so and just readjusted the collar so you guys can see it a little bit better but those are my two tails here where I started and where I finished and what I'm going to do is just pull it a bit, apply a little bit of tension. You can see how much tension you've applied and how, how much you've pulled on your elastic. If you look at the columns, these columns will get closer and closer um, as you pull that elastic thread tighter and tighter. So. What I'll do is I'll just do a simple overhand knot. And we don't want to pull too tightly when we do this second knot because the elastic thread will snap. So just got to make sure that you've reached a tension that you like. And you saw how easy it was to sew in. So if you get it wrong, cut it out, try again. You can even put this on your neck and as you're wearing it, pull the elastic thread and do the knots while you are wearing it. Um, so that's knot two. No need to pull too tightly. And I like to do a third knot. Third time's a charm, right? Okay, so next we need to kind of hide or weave in these ends. I like to leave these long because I'm going to put this back on my needle and actually weave it through one of these columns and let the tails hang down into my sweater. Um, because as you wear it, there is gonna be shifting. Every time you put this over your head, you're gonna be stretching the elastic and then that can cause this point of where you've made the knot because it's just a continuous loop. It can travel around. So I like to secure that so it doesn't travel too much and doesn't allow the tails to poke out after.
So I'll just run it through um, the column down into the base of the neckline. Just kind of double check it's not showing on the other side. Okay, so pulled it through. I want to make sure I'm not causing extra tension this way though. And then what I like to do is tie a knot down here, a loose knot, and this will prevent the tails from peeking up. So I'll take one of the tails, thread it onto my needle, thread it through a stitch so that there's kind of a stitch in between, and we're going to knot and secure this thread around this stitch here in the base of the neckline. So again, just an overhand knot. And sure, three, three. We'll do three again. There we go. And we can snip it a bit. All right, so now that tail is secure. It shouldn't pop out into view um, as you wear the sweater more and more. Um, but that is how I sew elastic thread into the collars. And here's how the collar looks with elastic sewn in. You can see I can tug on the collar and the elastic pulls it back into shape. If you find that the collar is still not in a shape that you like, I recommend adding more elastic, a second or even a third line in a row below your first one. All right, as mentioned, some more information about elastic thread. So this is the knitting elastic thread I just used in the neckline of my Haley Genzer. The nice thing about this one is that this one is specifically made for knits and this is made to hold with a strand of yarn, your yarn and knit it directly into your project. So this one, I'll read from the packaging here. I just have um, the brand is called Unique. It's 100% Lycra. And features of this from the label here is knits to same dimensions, elasticity consistent after washing and wearing, does not create excess bulk. And it says to knit, apply sight tension to elastic when knitting with yarn or wool, used to tighten cuffs, collars, or waistbands. And it also has an extra note here for ready-made sweaters and knits. Uh, this one says it recommends to backstitch on the wrong side of garment ribbing. Um, I did not do a backstitch. I just sewed uh, through every other stitch for my neckline. Um, but that could give you a little bit more um, elasticity or strength if you need it. Um, but it did mention that you can knit this directly into your garments. And that is what I did with my Friday tee. I just did this as an experiment because after reading the package, I thought, well, why not give it a try? So I held it for three rounds um, in the neckline here. This is a neckline that you start with the collar and it is folded over. And you can't see where I've put it, but there is this pearl round. And so the elastic is knit into the rounds before um, the pearl round, the pearl round itself and after. So there's three rounds where I held the elastic in. And I found, well, I've never used it before, but it seemed to do a good job. After washing and blocking, the neckline didn't flare out. It kind of stayed in the right position. Um, so that was definitely um, a good little experiment and something I may try again. This one being fingering weight uh, yarn, definitely, I think, contributed to the success of that. I don't know how the knitting elastic would do if it was anything bulkier like DK or worsted. Another way I've used knitting elastic is to prevent bagging out or sagging elbows. So this one, I use the knitting elastic in the arms of my BLS sweater. I found after wearing, there was all this extra fabric 
hanging out in the elbows and it just didn't really look great uh, with the overall aesthetic, the overall look of this particular knit. I didn't like that. So what I did was there are four rounds of elastic thread sewn in, um, two slightly above the elbow and two slightly below. And you really can't see it because there is some fluffy mohair in here as well. Um, but use the same method as the collar kind of picked up every other stitch um, and sewed it directly into the arms. Another way I've used elastic thread is in the neckline of my Elizabeth blouse. So an issue that can happen with this type of collar is that you get the collar kind of splaying out a lot when you're wearing it and I didn't want that for this one. So what I did was insert elastic thread all around the inside of the collar, starting from this end to this end. And so there's just a single strand of elastic thread anchored by a knot on either end. And what that does is keeps um, or prevents my collar from splaying out. So in case anyone has thought, wow, her collar sits really nicely, it's because I've got elastic thread in there to help it out. Um, and you can see I could just hold it like this and it stays put. If you can't find the transparent uh, knitting elastic thread, then my recommendation would be to find shirring elastic. This is something you can find in most fabric and sewing stores. And this is the type of thread that you're going to actually put in a bobbin in a sewing machine, and it's used to gather fabric. Um, I have here just from my local fabric store, um, this brand here. So the downside about using shirring elastic is that it's not transparent. Uh, it does come in white and black, maybe other colors, I'm not quite sure. Um, but this one I find when you are tying knots, it is a bit stronger. So when you finish and tie the knot on the transparent knitting elastic, you do have to have a little bit of care. Um, don't want to pull too tight, otherwise the thread will snap. This one you can apply a little bit more tension when making those knots. Um, this one is something I used in my Audrey top, um, but a dress. And this is the elastic that I have thread through the I-cord straps and around into the underarm. And that's an area where I did actually use the back stitch uh, sewing method to uh, secure it into the underarm of that um, garment. So there you have it. These are the two elastics that I use in my garments. If you can't find the transparent one, then the shirring one is great. Um, just be mindful of where it might be visible in your garment. That's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.